Oh, hallelujah, grab your swords. Tuesday night training. And those that are listening at their homes and cars and everywhere else. Ephesians chapter 4, please. Ephesians 4. Verse 17. Ephesians 4, 17. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should know what? No longer walk as the rest of the world or the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or their thoughts having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. In other words, he's saying you should be no longer walking in the flesh with selfish, lustful desires, becoming blinded to the truth and separated from the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who being past feelings emotionally have given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanness with greediness. In other words, they're being deceived. Their hearts have become hardened with rebellion. And where there's rebellion, there's a what? A curse. Amen? Where there's rebellion, there's a what? Curse. Living from feelings of their past, partaking of the unclean process of self-restoration instead of restoration from Christ. By this you have never learned the true ways of Christ in relationship by the Spirit and have fallen to religious rituals that lack the power of God's presence. I'm going to repeat that in a minute. In verse 20, let's speak it. But you have not so learned Christ. You have not learned the anointing. You have not learned how to press and cross over. If indeed you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt, according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts, and that you put on the new man which cre was created according to God in true righteousness and what? Holiness, yes. In other words, what has occurred here is they, they fell into a process of self-restoration, not by restoration from God. And they've never learned the ways of Christ in relationship by the Spirit and have fallen into religious rituals that lack the power of God's presence. Oh, they may know the Word, but they lack God's presence. Amen? Remember, Jesus was the Word and did, and he did nothing until the presence of God came upon him. And what happens is they're claiming to be Christians, but unable to renew themselves in the presence of God. I want to go a little bit further here because this is so powerful. In verse 25, he says, Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we have our members of one another. Being angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? Nor give place to the devil. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> and right now, I mean, we, we see so much hardness, so much bitterness, so much attack, so much hard uh, pressing in from the enemy. Again, people are proclaiming to be Christians, but they, they're trying to renew themselves. They can't even renew themselves without God's presence. Now is the time to put away rebellion, compromise, and selfish ambitions, and give no place to the devil, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Let's go a little further. Um, let's see, where are we? Here we go. Not, let no what? Let him who stole no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Now, what is grace? God's plan of escape. Amen. It's not God's favor. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 
And let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. Again, now is the time to put away rebellion, compromise, selfish ambitions, and give no place to the devil, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And then what does grieving the Holy Spirit? It brings a what? Curse, because it's rebellion. Where there's rebellion, there is a curse. And where there's a curse, you cannot progress. You stay in the cycle. Repeat, 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 repeat. We must turn to the process of Christ and live from the future to the present and not from the past to the present. See, where it says you've not learned Christ, it means not learning Christ is not using the weapons of God. They're not using the weapons of God. What did God say? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many people proclaiming to be Christians do not even know the weapons of God. They call on the name of Jesus all the time. But God is saying, look it, I gave you the weapons. Use them. Amen? And Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 32. Matthew 10, 32. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, what? Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. For what? To fight. Amen. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Who who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Will find it. Remember, the sword is the word of God. It's ammunition. That's the ammo. Amen? It's the words of God. They're ammo. And that's what we load into weapons to attack. Go to Proverbs 18. In verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21. Is everybody there? It says what? Death and life are in the what? The power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So death and life is in the power of the tongue. It's a, your tongue, your mouth is the most powerful weapon. But it needs to be loaded with ammo. Amen? And the words of God. And, of course, they must be backed by the anointing of God. But your mouth is the most powerful weapon that there is. And that, in that weapon, so now you put the ammo in your spirit, your mouth. Amen? So when you speak the words, backed by the anointing, it becomes the sword of the spirit. 2 Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. And verse 3. For though we walk in the physical, I know it says flesh, but that's a totally different meaning. We do not war according to the physical. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. Casting down arguments. And where's the arguments at? In your thoughts. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? 
fulfilled. These weapons are not physical, but spiritual. Amen? Your mouth must be sanctified to be used with the ammo of God. Why? Because the word is sanctified. The ammo are the words of Christ through obedience to the leading of his spirit. In other words, when he says, when your obedience is fulfilled, then you have authority. What do you have to do? That mouth and that tongue must be sanctified. Amen? Why? Because it's holy breath, it's holy spirit. Luke 9. We're getting to the title here in a minute. Luke chapter 9. Death and life and the power of the tongue. So we must be careful what we speak. Amen? So if somebody's going to ask you if you're an addict, you're going to say, yeah? No. I'm a new creation in Christ. All things pass away. You know? And that's how people stay in bondage. They learn management, not freedom. That's the difference. Verse 23. And Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross when? Daily and follow me. Now, listen. He says, if you desire to follow him, so there must be a desire there, amen? He says, if you desire to come after me, that means you must desire relationship. If you don't desire a relationship, you're not going to be one who pursues him every day. See, there must be a daily pursuit. This is the difference between religion and relationship. And this is where the enemy takes many people out of relationship, puts them in a religious ritual, thinking that because they read the word of God, and they're no longer doing the things they used to do, amen, that they're good. But they lack God's presence and power. So eventually they go back into the cycle and redo the same things over and over and over. Heck, you can be clean for 30 years, not using drugs or alcohol, but still falling in sin. Amen? There's a lot of people in hell that are clean. And I don't mean by spiritual, uh, spiritually clean. I just mean clean of alcohol and drugs and so forth. But they fall in fornication. They watch pornography. They do certain things that open the door to the devil. The Bible says, make no place to the devil. Why? Because when you die, who you serve is where you go. Amen? Remember, grace is God's plan of escape. It's not unmerited, it's not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. <laughs> he loves us unconditionally. Verse 24, again. Whoever, uh, uh, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world riches and wealthy and himself is destroyed or lost? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words and my life, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and in his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing who, are not, who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Look at if there is no desire, then there's no relationship. There must be a daily pursuit of God's presence. Must be daily. So if there's a daily pursuit of God's presence, there must be daily warfare to maintain a daily pursuit. That's why he says, you must deny yourself. Amen. Pick up the cross. If you pull a cross out of the ground, it becomes a what? A sword. That means you must fight. Then you can what? Follow. So there must be a daily pursuit, but there must be a daily fight. That's why you're to get up, put on the full armor of God, bind blind, mute, and death the powers of darkness. Amen? Decree the, your, the words of Christ. Apply the blood of Jesus. There must be a pursuit of your enemies to drive them out so that you can bring the presence of God in. 
Once you, per, once you pursue the enemies of warfare, now you pursue God's presence. See, so many people try to do it in reverse, and it ain't working. And they stay carnal. Amen? Many fall short. Many. Because they're not in a daily pursuit. Even the Word says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and what? Everything will be added. And why are people lacking? Because they're really not pursuing. They fall into religious rituals. And they're working for themselves. The labor is unto self, not unto him. That's totally different. Acts 17. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. <laughs> and his power is fear. Saying God's raising up warriors, not wimps. He, he does not like religion. He wants relationship. Religious is outer court stuff. There's no access. Verse 22. I love this because Paul really has got a way of rebuking these people even though they don't know it. In verse 22 it says, Then Paul stood in the midst of, come on, read it with me, asparagus. <laughs> it wasn't asparagus, amen. <laughs> Arapagus. <laughs> and he said to the men of Athens, I perceive that you in all things you are what? Very religious. <laughs> For I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, even though even found an altar with this instruction, inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with man's, men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life breath and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has predetermined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should what? Seek the Lord and hope that they might grow for him and do what? Find him. That's pursuit, isn't it? Though he is not far from each of us, for in him we live, move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also the what? His offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of stupidity and ignorance God has overlooked, but now his com commands all men everywhere to what? Repent and turn and be restored and reconcile, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Again, seek, grope, find this is the place where we call the great crossover, where you're followed because you're a daily pursuer. There will become a time when you cross over. And when you cross over because you're one who daily pursues, your daily warfare to pursue Christ, to pursue his presence, you cross over and there's a revelation and a change in you. There's healing, there's deliverance in every area of a crossover. Remember when, G when the Lord came and and, and he took Moses, amen? He said, look at Moses, I'm going to use you. And he goes, man, I don't know what they're doing, man. He said, come out in my office for 40 days. Tim, it was five minutes. He didn't even know. He didn't eat or drink or do anything. Next thing you know, he left. He changed. The glory of God was on him. He was a brand new man in God's presence, amen? And then that was the exodus. Although they went through a lot of stuff to get out. But when they came out of the bondage, they left with the gold, the silver, and everything. And then they went into the wilderness. Amen? They had to cross over, though, the Red Sea, didn't they? And then what happened? They grumbled and complained. They still wanted to go back because they had everything they wanted, supposedly. But they forgot the bondages, the slavery, the abuse, the hard work. The long days, the disrespect, 
I forgot all about that. Because they were people of self right then and there, wanted now. So the Lord had them roam for quite a few, quite a few years, amen? And then only two made it out of millions to the promised land. But again, there's that place of crossover. See, when you become born again in the Spirit, I said in the Spirit, there's a difference of Jesus being your Savior or, and, or your Lord. Many people call him, oh, he's my Lord and Savior, but they really don't have a relationship with Lord because if he's your Lord, you're obedient to everything. You still don't live for yourself. You're living for him. You labor on him no matter where you are or what you do. You're not interested in getting high anymore. You're not interested in doing it anything. That life is history. You've reached a point of no return. Why? Because you crossed over. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're to set the Lord before us. Amen. And again, it takes a daily fight. <laughs> a daily fight, a daily cast out, cast down. <laughs> All of those goofy things. Our eyes must be on Him, not on ourselves. We will be protected from all corruption. I want to show you. Go to Psalm 16 for a second. Ask, seek, and knock, he says, doesn't he? Amen. We're to be daily pursuers. There must be a daily pursuit. But you can't pursue without a daily fight. You fight first, then you pursue. Actually, your fight is a process in pursuing, isn't it? But again, many people don't know how to fight. They get it before God, and the only thing they're doing is asking for what they want. Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it together. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. How do you bless the Lord? Praise and worship. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have done what? I have set the Lord always. Everyone say always. Before me. Why? Because this is an individual who is, does what? He pursues. He daily fights and he daily pursues. Now he's able to set the Lord before him. That's how you and I should be. We should, no matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, the Lord should always be before us. You should be looking to Him to say, what's up? Amen? You should be looking to Him, sir. What do you think? Everything is acknowledge Him, acknowledge Him. Well, if you're not setting, you can't set Him before you without a fight and pursuit. It's impossible. You'll have everything else between you and Him. It says here, because He is at my right hand, I shall not be what? I won't be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see what? Corruption. Are you one of His Holy Ones? Amen. You're His offspring. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Again, we set the Lord before you. It takes a fight, daily fight. <laughs> You're going to have to cast out and cast down. Eyes on him, not on self. Then there's protection from corruption. There's a path to walk in. And it says the path of life, which is the path of grace. Remember, grace is God's plan to escape. Into his presence. So that path is always leading you into his presence. And in his presence, there's joy. And then in the, out of his presence, is benefits and favor. Everything comes from his presence. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Then you will not be moved. Glory. First Timothy chapter four. Let's speak it. Verse one. Now the Spirit expressly says, 
I love this expressly. He's like shaking people. Look at, wake up. That in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. In other words, they will lose that connection. Faith is your connection. Forever attached in the heavenlies, faith. It's your connection, amen? Faith comes by hearing the words of words and voice of God. Faith comes by praying in tongues also. Stirs it up. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, we see that all over the news. Amen? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marrying, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wise tales. Exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. In other words, people are going to fall faith, fall away from faith by lies and, and media and medical and forcing, forcing doctrines that are doctrines of demons on people. Amen? Affecting their relationship with the Lord. And they have not sanctified the word of God in them. Or they would be able to overcome. Not fighting. There's no victory. There's no pursuit. Easily swayed. You know how many people have been jabbed because they don't know the truth? It's amazing to me how many people have been jabbed, forced into taking a medication that they don't want to. And they accepted it with no fight. Hebrews 12. Hebrew 12, verse 25. Speak it together. See that you do not what? Refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, and that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. This shaking is to separate and expose. Separate and expose those who are genuine and those who are fake. Amen? There are wannabes and willabies. First Peter chapter 1. What's the shaking for? To separate the genuine from the fake. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Let's speak it together. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials called shaking. That the genuineness of your faith, the genuineness of your relationship, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Yes. Again, 
There's those who fight and those that don't fight. Amen. That don't pursue. Those who've crossed over carry the anointing of Christ Jesus. The anointing comes by crossing over into his presence. And then we walk in the divine nature. The divine nature of Christ. Because without the anointing, without the divine nature, you can't overcome nothing. I don't care how much word you have. Without God's presence, you ain't nothing. Psalm 15. You know, it's a pity because I see so many Christians out there that are good people, you know. But they're deceived. They refuse to fellowship. They refuse to assemble. They want to live their own lives thinking that they're a Christian and okay. They read the word, but they got no power and no presence. And they're in for a big rude awakening. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle or in your presence, and who may dwell in your holy hill, he who what? Walks uprightly, who works righteousness, who speaks the truth in his own heart, who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, whose eyes, in whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He swears to his own hurt and does not change no matter what. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Second Timothy 2. Well, he couldn't do this without a what? A fight a, and a pursuit. Second Timothy 2. Did we do okay? Verse 1. Let's speak it together. Therefore, you therefore, my son, be strong in the plan of God. Amen. Grace. That is in Christ Jesus. The things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. Those are people who are full of faith. Who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good what? Soldier or fighter of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules, the guidelines of the Spirit. The hardworking farmer must first be the part to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God does not, is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He can't deny himself. We are soldiers. Training sessions. We must maintain the identity of who we are. Not just as a Christian. You know what I'm saying? We're sons and daughters of the Most High. <laughs> We're the offspring of the anointing. We are ambassadors of Christ. We're more than conquerors. We're in a battle. We were born in a war. A spiritual war. And remember, you're not, you're not fighting something physical. You're fighting influence. You're fighting voices. You're voice, fighting the presence of evil. And we must stay filled, connected 
We must be a pursuer of the presence of God so that we can fight every day. It's a daily pursuit. It's a daily fight. You lack in it, the enemy knows. You lack more than two days, everybody else knows. 2 Timothy 4. Verse 1. 2 Timothy 2, 4. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. What does he say? Speak, decree the word. Release it. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Is that now? Amen. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables. But you be watchful, watchful. Well, you're not going to be watchful if you're not one who is a daily pursuit of the battle and, and the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But you be what? Watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry, your calling, your purpose, and your destiny. Simple teaching tonight. Simple reminder. Amen. Remember where we are right now. Look at what's going on in the world. We must fulfill the call. What are you called to do? Fight. We're called to what? Fight. What's our purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. What's our destiny? Is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But you can't do that without God's presence. Amen? And you can't do it without being sanctified unto the Lord. It's impossible. We must be fighters and pursuers to expand the kingdom of Christ and rescue as many souls as possible. Think about how many children are abducted every, every day. It's disgusting. For satanic ritual, sacrifices, and abuse. This is how those demonic spirits get fed. And all these organizations that promote it, as they're slowly, slowly opening the veil and exposing all the wickedness. That's what you're seeing right now. You're about to see a lot more happen. There's about a bunch of arrests about to happen. But see, people are so caught up in the world and in themselves. We're to be walking on the other side. <laughs> We're to be living from the future to the present. Not the present to the future. Amen. We're seated in heavenly places, joint heirs of Christ. We're the righteousness of God. Nothing that we did, but he did. And he who was in us is greater than he was in the world. But there must be a relationship. We must hear his voice. My sheep know my voice. We must be able to be led by the Spirit of God. And it takes being filled every day. It takes discipline. It takes being alert. It takes consistency. It takes practice. Practice is what makes perfect. So that it becomes a part of your life. And you don't think it anymore. You just do it. Amen? You get up and you fight. You get up and get dressed with the full armor of God. It's automatic. There's no thinking about it. Just like when you get in a car. Unless you've never driven before, you better start thinking about it. Amen? Amen? But, you know, if you've been driving for the next thing, you know, you get in somebody else's car, you know, as long as it's not one of these high-tech goofy, I mean, they got some really wild things going on. But anyways, you know how to drive after you get it started. <laughs> you can get anybody's car and drive. It's automatic, isn't it? Once you've learned it because you've been practicing for a while, you put this all into practice, you'll be an overcomer. You won't be moved. And you'll stand before the Lord and you'll say, enter in my good and faithful servant and bring a bunch of people home with you. Amen? But right now, God's raising up warriors. This is what this is all about. He's raising up soldiers, officers in the kingdom. You're not here by mistake. You're not listening by mistake. There's a reason and purpose. It's to be refreshed and renewed. 
Remember, the first thing the enemy wants to do is steal your identity. I can tell you many people who only think they call their identity a Christian, but they still don't even know who they are. They use the word Christian, but they don't know who they are. Man, when you know who you are, that does not come without knowing who he is. As you know who he is, you'll know who you are. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray protection over every seed that's been imparted in each and every one of us. And that the anointing would cause it to grow, bear fruit for your glory. Lord, bring to remembrance the things you've spoken to us tonight, that we may tr be true pursuers of your presence daily and fighters for your presence, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug and tell them you did it. <laughs>